welcome everyone and thank you for uh, staying throughout the conference and joining this uh, afternoon session. I'm Andrea Darabos. I will tell uh, some stories about my work helping companies, teams and individuals improve and achieve their goals. And this presentation was inspired by several repeated talks, conversations with managers who asked me how do I actually get my team to step up and be more proactive. Um, we have now organized into agile teams, we have cross-functional teams, but still I want to delegate to my team, but they don't take the power. Yeah? So this is the starting point for me. And I started this research about six months ago, looking for ways to develop, reignite people and develop people to step up to achieve their goals. But my story goes back a bit uh, longer time before that. And let me start with my personal story. Okay. And my personal story is around the dinner table. And um, I guess for most of you, where you grew up, uh, you spent most of the time in the kitchen. And that was true for us. And I'm from Budapest in Hungary. And mostly the conversations were happy and delightful. And we learned a lot. We always had dinner together as a family. So we learned from each other and we shared what went on during the day, like a mini retrospective. But that specific evening that I remember was very difficult one and still very memorable for me. Uh, that was when uh, I was about to choose what to study on university, which career <laughs> to choose to go for. And I was very much into mathematics and I loved logic and numbers and science. But in my country, there were 1% of women <laughs> doing that at that time, 1980s. And um, I told my parents, I want to be a software engineer. Um, and I was doing some software and getting my hands dirty. But uh, both of them said, no way, you can't do that. Uh, my mom said, you are really great talking and really great communicating. Why don't you choose something where you can do that more? You won't talk with computers, <laughs> not yet. And my dad said, you know, you can't do that. You are just simply not good enough to do that, not talented enough with numbers. And I felt really, really devastated because I truly knew I want to be a software developer and I want to do that all the time. <laughs> so I went on to be a software developer. I still applied to that university and I still love technology. But I remember that night because I was taught for the first time out of love or out of fear that I can't do something by my own parents. And this led me to work on my story, to realize that actually I can do anything I want. It might be hard, but I did it. And I'm still redefining my story and doing great other stuff. But that moment still is in me, and I'm still proving in many, many cases to others that I can. Maybe you resonate with this story. And this led me to help you, help a lot of people that I work with, that you can too. And focus more on what you can do rather than what you can't. And how many of you are a manager here in this room? And how often do we tell our people when they come up with crazy ideas that just go ahead, you can do it? How often do we tell, on the other hand, this is why you can't? We talk about weaknesses, we talk about lack of competence, we talk about gaps. <laughs> so this talk is about how to turn that around. And my vision and my purpose here is to help people realize their dreams and goals and to really show them, give them the confidence they can. I do make mistakes too. So I would like you to really tune in to why are you here today? And what is that, maybe that little sorrow in your heart, your story from your childhood, that leads you to things you care about today? And this is not about company KPIs, neither is it about strategy <laughs> or what you need to do next week. This is something bigger. What is your life goal? It could be a paragraph, it doesn't need to be one sentence. What do you deeply care about?
And in order to do this, we really need to use our whole body to sense what we care about. And this really means including our heart. Paolo Coelho talks about opening our heart. And always when going through this, think about yourself first as a person. Are you ready to tune into what your heart, your intuition tells you? But also as a manager, are you helping people talk from their heart and connect with their heart? This is what I'm, I'm working on. <laughs> so I brought to you some old theory, we all recognize the pyramid, but still relevant today, that the highest human need is to tune in with our heart. And that means, again, not just in the context of our company, our team, to self-actualize means to fulfill our true self, our many life goals, to learn to code, to love numbers, to help others self-actualize. And how to do that, how you can start? In this talk, we will look at some examples. And this is exactly what we did with one of my leadership teams I work with in a global bank. We started listening to each other's life stories, our real hobbies, and we, we, we also try to be curious about what's going on for each of us. This childlike curiosity and attention to detail, sharing personal photo albums, meeting each other's families, and really more connecting on a human level. Um, are you doing that enough? Are you open-minded enough, and do you have a context and environment where you are encouraged to do new things? Totally outside of your role. Totally not the same thing that you do every day. And are you spending enough time to think about what your heart is telling you? In the age of social media and constant flow of emails, it's really hard to do, but we need to slow down in order to speed up. We need to first tune in with who we are and do this constantly because we change. And are you honest? And this is back to the psychological safety. One of the talks um, uh, uh, Sean Hasty talked about, the, the findings that teams who perform really have this honesty. Are you able to disagree with your colleagues? And are you able to be honest in your communication? And do you feel that ultimately you can change your life? Do you have an environment where your people feel that they can? And there is focus on what everyone can do. So the lean, lean community was mentioned here, is, is merging with the agile community, searching for the same thing, is how do we improve the world? And I love this 4D lean model because it shows an evolution of focusing on <laughs> status quo, originally do nothing in our organization, evolving the view first. When lean started, a lot of focus in the West on tools, and what we can steal in terms of practices, but this was all about profits. The real lean is more about tuning in, that it's people who improve companies, it's people who improve their lives. So this was more about engagement and tuning in with the people who do the work. But modern lean and modern agile touches the heart. And there is a mod modern agile manifesto as well, which I really like. It has safety and respect for people. And it, it has the belief that people are awesome as they are already. It's just we need to empower them, enable them to contribute their full self. So this model really uh, leads us through uh, to, to uh, another story of how do we encourage people to connect with their hearts. And I took here uh, another lean story. It's not really lean, it's just Japanese story uh, that now also reached into Toyota, the Harada method which is an example on how you can make connecting with your heart more practical. So a Japanese uh, school teacher, uh, actually field and track coach, who started uh, deliberately in the worst and most difficult deprived neighborhood in Osaka. And he, was, uh, he had a strong belief that everyone can, even children with difficult family backgrounds who have given up hope can. We can re-energize people even those people you, who have lived and worked in a command and control environment. So he worked with kids and he wanted to win 
uh, championships with these kids. And he researched for years and years methods from the West, from Agile, from Lean, from around the world, from sports coaching, how to develop people. And his methods, it's more important the principles here than the practices, starts with encouraging people to dream big, encouraging to connect with their goals. What do these kids care about? Why do they want to champion, to be a champion? And then analyze the strengths of each individual, really understand who they are, write detailed tasks, actions that they can implement and turn them into habits and daily practices. And also link them up, connect them with a coach and have them succeed throughout the, the not so short journey of becoming a champion. And here is one proof. There are many people who follow and tried out this method uh, because now Harada is a, is a consultant, but one of his students is a um, um, US-based basketball champion now, 15 years later. And he had uh, the, the support and the structure of a, of a method and principles to holistically believe he can. Uh, he is using uh, Harada. What we can learn from structured methods like Harada is that success really is a belief you first need to create the confidence that you can, and it's not limited who you can become by your talents or your MBTI profile, as we have heard. Success is a technique that can be learned. And it's also a mindset. So here are some details. These are just excerpts. Try to look for the, the principles behind these. Goals from your heart. Can you spend time with your team to truly understand and talk about goals from your heart rather than from your head. Self-reliance is believing and knowing that you already have everything you need to succeed is within yourself. Serving others as a goal will be much more motivating, much more happy uh, and fulfilling than serving yourself. And there are practices, coaching practices we can put in place and conversations around this. Good character, if you help others, your character will be formed. Good character is not something you, you are born with. You grow every time you give and you help people. And help, getting help from a coach and a mentor helps you realize your goals, whatever hard they are. What is really nice in, in, um, in helping people succeed is that we don't just have them succeed on goals that the company cares about, just profit motive, really help them succeed as a person holistically. And there are elements of this, your health, your spiritual, your uh, emotional self and your body, all holistically needs to be improved and built. And why it's so important that we build self-reliance? Because many people still believe in our companies that we can't. We are still uh, only touching the minds of people but we need to touch the heart and develop people's lives so we can fulfill our potential. So final details, three supporting tools combined with the daily journaling practice. It's important that you don't necessarily take away the detail here, but more the principles. It's important that we find these goals from the heart. That's the long-term goal setting sheet. We look at what really touched us in our childhood recently. What do we deeply care about? We look at past uh, uh, successes. We learn from those. And we also enlist help from role models. The routine check sheet will be helping us develop daily habits. That is like writing a diary and checking up every single day. Have we done what we committed ourselves to? And the open window chart is a practice where you break down a big, hairy, audacious goal that you care about into eight areas where you, where, uh, you can work on, which will contribute to you achieving that goal. And then you break those eight areas further into eight further actions. It's like agile planning. So what is your life goal? I encourage you that uh, you work through what came up when I asked you that question. And you can really tap into your goal by connecting it to the wider benefit by you achieving that goal. How can you help others? Like tangible benefits for others, society and others, and intangible benefits. So we all have selfish goals, but why our self-realization would help our team, our family, our community? 
Other coaching tools were to break down the goal. This is the 64 window matrix. This is how you get started. What you notice, this is one of my goals. I deeply care about connecting people practices with agile. And agile HR is not necessarily just the HR people. It's how we all are responsible for changing human resources. Mentor and teach HR, preserve mental health. This is both for me and them. <laughs> Improve my fitness, important to keep energy. Look, uh, these are all helping me achieve my goal. Holistic goals, not only directly linked to the topic. And uh, lastly, routine check sheet, very easy. If you committed to a goal, how will you keep yourself on track? First thing is that you write a diary or you keep notes and look back on your goal. You follow up, but it really helps if you can have a peer, a colleague of you on your team who will hold yourself accountable. You effectively share your diary and have a conversation around that. Yeah? So building new habits and building resilience. This is uh, Mr. Harada on the left who uh, doesn't publish in English. He writes in Japanese, still lives in Japan. And Norman Bodek, who wrote a book on Harada. And he took it to the, to the West. And Norman uh, is, a, is an author, a lean uh, person, lean consultant of 60 years in the industry. And he taught, to, uh, talks about this method as the missing, missing link, because this is the only area in lean who focuses on people and developing human potential. And this is the first class um, in Toyota. This is in the US this spring, where the European uh, Harada Co. Jim on the, on the right uh, delivered the first class. So even Toyota is going back to the roots and developing uh, respect for people and developing, helping other people succeed, all, comp all uh, people in their companies. And if you look at their mission, developing people and building great teams, I think that's why you are here too today. So I would like to end with a question. Why are we here? Uh, is a thought experiment my vision? How would the world be different if we all believed we can? Thank you. <laughs>